Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss the worldwide trade in medical plants. And in this topic we are going to discuss digitalism of the cat. Now, the scope of this talk chapter is to know which are the major important drugs which have an greater value in an international trade. And we are going to discuss uh, this chapter in the following segments. The chapter we are going to discuss as in general introduction and how the India become an, can become an uh, world leader for trading in American plants. And afterwards we are going to discuss on digitalist worldwide trade and Indian trades. And you take it in a worldwide trade and Indian trades. So let's start. So in the next uh, introduction, we know that the demand of the Hubble market is growing day by day. At present the total Hubble market is up to the 62 billion dollar which is comparatively very high and going to become in the next decade is 5 trillions. So we can imagine that the importance of herbs and herbal products into the healthcare products. As well as if you see at the current situation, Europe, the European Union contributes the highest utilization of herbs in the world that is 47 percent followed by the Japan where the traditional system has been very well practiced and there 17 percent of the herbal products are being utilized followed by the asian asian is nothing but an association of southeast asian nations contribute for 20 percent the north america 12 percent and rest that is four percent used by the rest of the european union so india have a typical strength and due to this typical strength india can become a world return world leader into the trades of the medicinal plant in the world. So what India have is 16 agroclimatic zones, 10 vegetative zones, 15 biotic provinces and this unique combination makes us to have 45,000 different plant places on the India, in the India. Among that uh, 15,000 medicinal plant has been recorded as a medicinal plant including 7,000 from Ayurveda 700 from Unani medicines and 1200 from Siddha system of medicine. Moreover, again 30 medicine plants are being practiced in the modern medicine practices and the rest of the flow load medicines. And thus it makes this combination and this agroclimatic zones, vegetative zones and biotic provinces it makes India as one of the uh, one mega biodiversity center in the world and which shows that despite of having an only 2.4% of the land of the total globe, we are contributing the 8% of the biodiversity or we can say recorded species in the world. Now we will see what do you mean by agroclimatic zones. So India having a 16 agroclim agroclimatic zones. Agroclimatic zones are the, it's, it's, it's a combination of soil type, rainfall, temperature and water availability. And thus, the zones or these conditions makes to grow a different kinds of plants in the different parts of the plants. And thus, by selecting or the particular agroclimatic zones having a typical native plants, which which is available all over the world. Similarly, we have on ten vegetative zones. Vegetative zones are nothing but a combination of specific climate and soil. Climate includes the forest land, green land, grasslands, ice land, deserts and soil include the water holding capacity of the soil slope or you can say angle of these lands and this all combinations makes a different 10 agroclimatic zones. You might be seen in the different colors over here and these different agroclimatic zones also have an, a specificity to grow a specific medicinal plant which is almost found in the world. And also we have an uh, 12 biotic provinces, sorry 15 biotic provinces. So 15 biotic provinces is nothing but an, it is an association, ecological associations and which makes an unique. So there would be a range of plant species, plants from higher plants to the lower plants as well as a range of animals, vertebrates, non-vertebrates and everything. And which make an ecology and this ecology is uh, specific for specific region. Similarly, the 15 biotic provinces are available in India. So, I mentioned here there are 10, base, base, geographically that these are 10 and in geography, in the, this geography, if you divide it into the 15 biotic provinces are there. Indian desert, that is Kutch Indian desert is something different 
than the third. As well, if you want to see in trans Himalayas, that is TBT is different. Himalayas, there are again there are different forests. Biotic provinces are there, and this makes a unique combinations of the ecology, and thus gives in, gives rise to the growth of the small small plants as well as the higher plants. Now we are going to switch to the our individual plants. Now we are going to see first drug that is digitalis. So digitalis we already well versed with this and we have been studied in third year glyphosates. But this would be a small repetition. Digitalis is nothing but an, uh, if you see as a drug, it is nothing but a use of the digitalis purpuri or digitalis lanata, which belong to family Scrofloraceae. To be have an, to be known as a drug for a specific therapeutic ab activity, the digitalis should not be dry more than 60 degrees Celsius and moisture content in the final product should not be more than 5 or should be less than 5%. Geographical climatic conditions or geographical sources if you see, uh, this is typically native to Central Europe, uh, United Kingdom, then Greece and some parts of India. This geographical source gives an idea about the climatic conditions. So if you see this range of the geographical sources you will be easily understand that this plant requires some cool climatic condition as well as rain should be throughout the year. So we have, will just again brush up our cultivations knowledge. So plant grows in a cold sunny cold and sunny climatic conditions. Altitude it requires in 1600 to 3000 meters rainfall it requires 25 to 35 centimeters per annum and should be distributed at throughout the anum, it should not be a seasonal one. The temperature is, is an ambient temperature 15 to 25 degrees Celsius. Soil it requires a rich in calcium that is calcareous acidic sandy soils with the magnus content. Propagation initially it has been propagated by nursery baits. So the seeds mostly uh, so uh, subjected for sowing in a nursery bed when the seeds are very small in size and their viability is very less. So in case of digitalis also their viability or propagation ability is very less so it is initially uh, planted in a nursery blade beds and then followed by uh, the subject to the open field. Then proper pruning and thinning is required throughout his life Then it requires a proper fertilizer, pharma and manual gives them good results. And pesticides requires to avoid the leaf diseases. If you see in collection methodology, the collection has been carried out by hand picking method when uh, two third of the flower has been bloomed off. So here you can see, so this resin, resin inflorescence is still has to be bloomed and uh, downset flowers has been bloomed. In such condition, these plant are chosen for the collection of uh, the leaves. The first year leaves gives a higher glycosidal content. The leaves collection methodology is typical here. The basal and top leaves are collected lastly and middle side leaves are collected first. Decolorized leaves are rejected as it, ha it is assumed that the glycosidal has been oxidized already. The collected at a day times and followed that is to be in the morning session and immediately dried at a 60 degrees Celsius using an artificial drying technology and moisture content should be less than 5%. If the moisture is more than 5% then one of the enzyme which is present purpurease get activated and the glycoside is going to become an aglycone and which doesn't have any therapeutic effect. So there are typically, I uh, you will find a typical differences. I put here two pictures. So this is a digitalis purpurea and this is digitalis lanata. Digitalis purpurea they having pubescent leaf, bulbar detach, in grood uh, veins when you when you observe from the upper side, an oval shape, succulent uh, leaves are there. Then this is how the plant looks to be, and this is an, a typical change in the difference in your leaf. You'll find this is digitalis lanata which having a lanceolate shape. So name itself indicate lanata means lanceolate shape. So these are the, some typical differences in morphology. If you see in chemistry wise, there is a uh, slight change in the chemistry in case of uh, digitalis purpurea. This is a digitalis purpurea. This is digitalis lanata I mentioned here. 
So, in case of distalis purpurea, it shows typically a glycoside A, B, C and this glycoside A which analysis gives digitoxin uh, and which is almost similar to that of the lantocyte A which is present in a distalis lanata which also on hydrolysis gives the uh, hydrolysis and us side acetyl deacetylation it gives digitoxin similar to that in a distal uh, in purpurea b which gives a digitoxin on a partial hydrolysis uh, it gives a secondary glycoside which is similar to that of the lantocyte b which also gives in detoxin after the deacetylation of the sugar while a purpura glycoside C and lantoside C gives a difference here. In purpura glycoside C, it gives a citalin, while in case of lantoside C, it gives a digoxin, which is considered to be a safest therapeutically active drugs. After that, they also have an saponin glycoside like digitonol, digitin, digitosaponin, and other phenolic compound, ETC. So, distalis is worldwide used for the congestive cardiac failures in a different condition like in cardiac um, tachycardia as well as atrial fibrillation and fluttering. And because of that, there are specific quality requirements uh, as per the pharmacopoeias in the different part of the world. So, if you consider as an Indian scenario, in Indian scenario, they have been mentioned some standards, quality standards. Uh, which is being typically carried out from uh, the Indian Pharmacopoeia 1955. They have been given quality specification both for digitalis as well as digitoxin. The production and trades here, uh, it has been considered that the total world trade is estimated to have 100 tons per annum. The largest grower in the world is Europe, Germany, Switzerland and which are considered the largest supplier into the world. According to some data, uh, which is old data actually, uh, the 22.4 million prescription has been generated for digitalis and digitalis prepared drugs in the world. And in America itself, the, for digitoxin, more than 40.8 million prescription has been generated in 2008, which is uh, mentioned in a survey data. Now we are going to see India as an export how the India has been involved with the export of these uh, digitalis. So, you will be fined over here. So, this is a bar graph and this is a uh, line graph. So, this gives an average price per unit spreading throughout the year and this is a total volume or total quantity required or uh, total quantity exported uh, by this line graph. So this bar graph you will very you will find that in the month of from January to the June actually uh, June July the price of the drug is comparatively very high if you compare with the rest of the place here in case of again in January uh, April July uh, the price is comparatively high compared to the other 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 months of the years similarly here the demand from the other parts of the world have been com comparatively have more comparatively in the month of june and july august september similarly you will find in july to september again same graph you will be you will find the same things has been continued in the next year also as in totality india exports digital is uh, in the worth of 204000 to 1250 dollars uh, in as a totality if you see a country-wise distribution here, you will be surprised here. Uh, I mentioned uh, two pie graphs. One gives a total value of the export by the countries, uh, toward the countries and total quantity export uh, by the India toward the different countries. So, if you see here, the total value, uh, the 50 percent of the total revenue has been generated from Sri Lanka that is Sri Lanka is the f first and foremost followed by Sri Lanka and Israel but if you see total quantity wise or volume wise we can say Kenya is providing a 78.7 percent of the total revenue and if you find here the Kenya is somewhere in seventh position sixth position while in case of the revenue it would be in very high this would be different this may be because of the policies of government as well as Oman is the second one 
so this is what uh, the pie chart gives uh, where we uh, where we volume wise where we are supplying more so this is quantity wise we are supplying kenya as the first foremost country followed by oman followed by united kingdom and then sri lanka when if you consider price wise when you compared with the value wise sri lanka even though he is exporting very less quantity but he is giving very high revenue toward that quantity received singapore is the second one followed by the israel and united arabs in uh, digital is there are two chemical moieties which are therapeutically important that digitoxin and digitox digoxin digoxin is considered to be an more safer it doesn't accumulate into the body while digitoxin is get accumulated and shows in toxicity as well as half life is comparatively very less compared to the digitoxin digoxin sorry and because of the digoxin is an only products derived from the digitalis has been utilized worldwide digoxin has specifically applicability in case of cardiac issues or cardiac problems so it mainly uh, used in heart failure with the sinus rhythm and atrial fibrillations it also being utilized in art atrial fluttering where the uh, the heart beats are comparatively very more more than 180 something like this it is also useful in proximal atrial tachycardia useful in prevention of proximal atrial arrhythmia also it is also being one of the prophylactic drug used before the cardiac surgery to maintain the rhythm of the heart while digitoxin has already said it is having some toxicity issue and half life uh, is very short and accumulated into the body and this is only used to produce a digoxin semi synthetically if you remembering the structure what we learned in third year and digoxin having at c12 position oh and a digitoxin doesn't have it so that is a chemical difference in the basic moiety while the attached sugar so there are actually uh, three sugars are there in uh, and digoxin as well as digitoxin in case of digoxin at third sugar the is acetylated that is in case instead of oh yes, there is an o c o o c s 3 while in case of digitoxin it is simply oh this two changes can convert digitoxin into the digoxin and this is what it is used thank you if you have any issue please add in a comment or please write in my blog thank you